by and large, if you're not doing it for a quarterback, it's probably a mistake. I would agree. Let's let's dive into this one really quick. I uh, I texted you just a short time ago and told you I was going to be asking this. Um, now, this does not have to be a first-round player. Obviously, this can be somebody with second-round, third-round grade, whatever it is. Uh, but the player that you most hope the Bucks draft this weekend, whether it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, who do you hope that they get that fits in best with the scheme and can help them win? Give me a tackle. I'll go. I'll go off the buffet <laughs> and take any of those guys in the opening round. I don't think Jedrick Wills is going to be there uh, when they pick at fourteen. They'd have to move up for him, the Alabama tackle, which I know you're more fond of, Gary, uh, with the tide stuff. But uh, whether it's Makai Becton or any of those guys, take a look at a, at a tackle, and they do need a running back. I don't think it's going to be running back in the opening round. That could be your guy, uh, Edward Zolaire there That's, from LSU. I would, I would take him in the second round. I would, I that, would, I would, would wait be, for the third. Keep an, eye on, keep an eye on that name or a couple of other running back names in the second round or the third round that, that have no pressure on them to get to come play with Tom Brady. So offensive tackle first and then one of those running backs. That's, running, I, those, I, running back second round. Let me go on and tell you this. I wouldn't touch Makai Becton with anything. Like, nothing. No, no 10-foot pole, no nothing. Uh, he, he looks great. It, it's one of those guys that you were talking about the Eagles took because he looked good in yep. shorts and T-shirt. Yep. Look, I understand he ran a 5-1, and he's six foot seven, 360-plus pounds. I get that. And, and you can't teach size, right? We've all heard the cliche. But if you go back and look, he ranked number 118 and number 108 in Pro Football Focus's uh, rankings for an offensive tackle in his first two years. This past year, he ranked number 30. But... If you look at what was going on with Scott Satterfield's offense at Louisville, they only ran 73 true pass sets at Louisville last season. 73. And on eight of them, he allowed pressure. That is a terrible percentage. He is not good with for, uh, footwork. It, his tape is awful. And he's still a massive, gargantuan human. But I wouldn't touch him if I were the if I were the Bucks because it's going to take a long time to develop that guy. Uh, McKinnon jumped in on Facebook. He said odds that the Bucks go after Fournette and get rid of the tight end, uh, two birds with one stone zero. potentially. What was that, Chris? Chris zero. dismissed it at zero. Hey, Fournette's name is being bantied around, and that I mean, it might not be that far him, But I don't know that. I don't. Know, I think they're going to have a hard time finding trade partners. I agree. Well, but the the premise is: Would you swap? Howard for Fournette, both on rookie contracts to make it to make it work. Final year of rookie contracts, maybe that's something if, Jacksonville if would be interested in. I don't deal. know. If I yeah. wanted somebody on a prove it deal, then I probably would take Fournette. I would still draft one of these running backs. Gary and I've had this conversation so many times. I, I would draft a rookie running back every four years. I'd run them to the ground, and then as soon as they're free, I'd apologize <laughs> to my fans for buying all their jerseys. I'd let them walk, and I'd draft another one. Yeah. They'd never get a contract from me. Yeah, and what's amazing on that point is it used to be such a running back-centric draft and first round that yep. every year you'd have five or six or seven running backs being taken. And now it's, oh, my God, they took a running back in the first round. It's amazing, it's amazing how and things have changed have come out of the first now in the 20th. Have, have been amazing for the first couple of years, and then they hit a cliff, they all get paid, and they fall to their death. And I just don't want any part of tying up. It's a hard cap league, and I need as much money going to the trenches, to the quarterback, and to the receivers. I can find running backs off the scrap heaps. I can run by committee all day long. I can figure it out. I mean, the best running the back Patriots on the Rams. Do it my entire life. Yeah. I've watched them do it my entire life. The best Don't running back on the, the Rams backs. in the Super Bowl year was C.J. Anderson, and he played for three teams that year. Yeah. I mean, it's just insane. And, so, and well, and like Chris was saying, the Patriots, the Patriots have con- on give me just anybody that we can work in, fit them in, contract friendly, and we'll rock and roll with whoever it is and change them out every year or two. I, I will say this though. I mean, this is like is, is this is like radio days. Is this right off Wednesday for Chris Giannini? Are you writing off <laughs> Christian McCaffrey and that new deal? Are you writing off that, oh, that Ezekiel I'll, I'll Elliott is I'll not going to be I'll high level for the next three or four years? Every deal we have seen running backs get in the modern day times, we all keep saying, I know running backs aren't worth it, but I think this guy is different. 
I know the numbers say it's not going to work, but I think this guy is different. And I catch myself saying that about McCaffrey. Well, he's just a different kind of player, so he won't fall off the cliff the way the other guy. There's just no way I'd have, paid. I'd have let him. I'd have used him. I might have franchised him one more year. So you could have played. I think he would. you could have gotten control over him two more seasons, and then you'd let somebody else pay him that absorbent amount of money. I'm just sorry. I know it's a dirty league. And I know it's hard for the fans who are in love with these guys, but it's a business and we got to win championships. And unless you're going to be James White and Brandon Bolin, those are the two guys for the Patriots that have been there the longest right now. Two running backs that that probably couldn't make most rosters. Well, James White probably could. Brandon Bolden, no chance. No chance. He was a bum coming out of Ole Miss. He's been with them for 11 years. <laughs> and never really got paid. He just took whatever no, he was offered. he makes the league minimum. He shows up, and he gets meaningful minutes in playoff games. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, TJ, let's see. For, uh, well, McKenna jumps in with a question. TJ, I'm going to get your, uh, your opinion on this. Will Brady need a solid run game in his older age to help win? Uh, my thought is yes, 100%. You always need... Uh, he said, don't get me wrong, he's still TB12, but time gets us all eventually. I, I think even if he was in his prime, you still need a, a running game. You need somebody to, to take some pressure off to get the safeties up to the line of scrimmage to open up that passing game. So, 100%. TJ, you, uh, you in agreement there? Agreed. And the Bucks have a guy on the roster from a couple of years ago as a second-round pick in Rome who, uh, again, you're extolling the virtues of Dirk Cutter, and I'm not, I'm not revealing a nuclear secret, but Dirk Cutter and his offensive coordinator, Todd Munkin, wrote off, speaking of right off Wednesday, they wrote off Ronald Jones and thought he was a bust and didn't think he was any good and didn't think he uh, could catch the football, and that's still maybe a little bit of an unknown. But the new coaching staff goes, comes in, instills a little confidence in him, and Ronald Jones was running downhill at people, over people for a lot of last season. He didn't have a spectacular year but he had a really good year. He had a really enjoyable game in the, in the uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium against the Falcons and Dirk Cutter where he bulldozed about three Falcon defenders for a touchdown and ran for close to 100 yards in that game. I think, Ronald, I think Ronald Jones is in a great situation and in a great position to rack up a lot of yards, a lot of goal line carries, and, and chances to score, and I like him. I, I think he has a lot of upside, and now let's see if they get somebody to compliment him that can catch – the football. Am I correct that Deion Lewis, after the Titans released him, is still a free agent and is still out there, right? Yes, he is. So yeah, he's still free that, agent. I think that name, the draft's over. That's right. Keep an eye on that name. You you think that, that Gronkowski is the only guy having conversations with Tom Brady? I bet you Deion Lewis is having conversations with Tom Brady. I, Get I in here on a one-year deal, and let's go win a title in Tampa catching the ball out of the backfield. Let's see what happens. That's, I'm, I'm with you. I'll tell you my answer to that question is, is I just trust Bruce Arians. I, I don't know what the offense is going to look like. That guy's had offenses that were run heavy. That guy's had all – he just says, what are my skill players? What do the guys around me, what can they do? And I build an offense around that. He's very I Belichickian. Trust him. I trust yeah. Byron Leftwich. I, I think Bruce Arians is one of – I mean, other than Bill, he's my favorite man in the NFL, in front office, and coaching and everything. I just trust him. I always have. And, and I, like I said, I've seen him do it with a big running game and couldn't throw the ball. I've seen him throw the ball all over the place and didn't run it at all. He, it just – give me the weapons I got, and I'll make, I'll make chicken salad. I'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. He's, he's very Belichickian. He, he takes what he's got and finds a way to win with it. And, I mean, he's, he's fantastic. Uh, TJ, we're going to let you out of here momentarily, but – before we do that, I want 